days that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Last point, I'll be done. I want you to focus on in verse 29 the word labor. Yes, sir. Because in Matthew chapter 11, this is what Jesus said Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. But here he's talking about labor, and what he's talking about in Matthew is a different kind of labor. Both of them are labor, but one of them laboring is causing men to be tired and heavy laden and burdened. But this labor, which is being initiated and wrought by God from the inside, this is the real labor that he's called you to. For he's trying to call men out of in Matthew chapter 11 in yeah. that labor that they were doing out of themselves. Out of themselves, right. Yeah. It's the labor that you try to do when you read the scripture and say, that's your, that's your, uh, the, the one seat, if they smite your one, turn the other, it's when you try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you find out that the work is grievous, dead <laughs> You find out all of this stuff here rough right here. But when the Spirit of God is working on the inside of you, woo! I didn't hear Stephen say when they took up stone to stone here, boy, this show rough right here. Boy, this <laughs> no, the Spirit of God has undergirded him now. And Spirit is safe Stephen is being moved and carried by the Spirit of God. Mm. He testified before the Sanhedrin, and even while they have, they have taken up stones to kill him and are stoning him, he said to them, lay not this thing to their trouble. He did, right? He just said, ouch. Yeah. So there's a difference between the labor that we see in verse 29 and the labor that Paul is, that Jesus is talking about at Matthew chapter 11. Mm. Matthew chapter 11 is calling you out of your own self labor. And here you see that he's got a laboring for you. And that's what Jesus was saying. The Father worketh hitherto. And I work. And I work. Yeah. This is the kingdom work that we want to focus on. And this is how we will be able to fulfill the eternal purpose of God. When we learn that it's not us being able to initiate the thing and trying to do it out of our own power. It's the anointing. But this power is not only for laboring, the other verse 24 said, this power is for suffering. Mm. You endure it, right? It is for dying. The affliction of the anointing. I think the anointing that anointing, that anointing casting on you allows you to. The anointing, I think, empowers us to abide in Christ. Yeah. And if we abide in Christ, then Christ will work through us. Right. Our yeah. anointing is not an empowerment for us to do a thing, but our anointing is, is an empowerment for him to allow things to be, for us to allow him to do things through us. I, I think so, the anointing allows us to, right? The anointing it, it is empowers us to, to, to abide. Us. It empowers right. us to abide. Right. It's that anointing. So we just need to continue to work and allow the anointing to remove the burden. And well, we, 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 you know, there was something that you, when he said allow, you know, I mean, to, and I said uh, defile, you said a, 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 a bite. And what, a I can't remember what, what yeah. you said, but mm -hmm. the, the, it says not that goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. Yeah. So there is a place where this puppet can, and not of its own will, where it can stay on my hand or it can come off of it. And that's, that's, the, that's where we lay. We can't do the works of Christ, but we can abide in him in such a manner that he can work through us. And I think that's where the deceptions are going to come in and why it's going to be so easy to deceive because it says that in the end times that even if it were possible, that even if it were possible, that even the very elect would be deceived. Yes, sir. If we abide in Christ, yeah. if we're doing those things that keep us in alignment with him, then when he starts to work through us, it's not something we're even taking on our own because we know he do it. Like they rent their clothes. Yeah. When they tore their clothes, they're like, man, it ain't us. It's, it's, it's who's working in and through us. So we come to that point where we know we didn't initiate the action, so we can't take credit for it. But for those who are not submitted to Jesus of Nazareth, they're going to be able to do some stuff that's not initiated of Jesus of Nazareth. And it's going to look a lot like stuff that Jesus of Nazareth is doing. But we who know Jesus of Nazareth and who have submitted ourselves to his leading, 
won't fall prey to that because we don't understand who's getting the glory out of the whole life. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that that's what I'm saying is the anointing. Because that jawbone, Jimmy, wasn't the reason he used the jawbone to feed the army is the thing is that you know a jawbone can't do nothing. But there's the anointing. The anointing, the anointing is a person. It's yes, come on. Make sure you understand that the anointing is a person. Uh -huh. it's the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. In Woo! It's in a, you. So listen now. In, in, in Matthew, Jesus is telling them, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You rest. Okay? So he's calling them out of work. Uh huh. Uh huh. But then he says, Take my yoke upon you. Yes, Wait sir. A Wait a minute. I thought you were calling me out of work. You were talking about rest. Now you're talking about a yoke. Because I want you to use anointing. In the Testament, a yoke implies that you've been getting, you're ready to go back into work. Yeah, but it's still, it's still. Take my yoke upon you Woo! and learn of this. Yeah, let the I Holy want, Spirit. I want, to call you, I want to call you out of flesh and world of call work and show you how to enter into the work that God has You were created to work. Woo! So, so. Uh, when it says that six days shall you labor uh -huh. on, the day. on the seventh day, that was the day set aside for fellowship and communion with God. Yes. On the seventh day, only God is allowed to work. Woo! And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, he's going to 